Get up! It's time for Mr. Pat! It's time to learn with Mr. Pat! He's gonna break down all the facts, like who and where and why is that. So tell us how it works! What's that, Mr. Pat? Whoa! What's going on? Oh man! I was having the most amazing dream about ice cream. Oh, hey family, you caught me at just the right time. Since it's so much easier to be woken up in the second sleep stage, did you know that sleep accounts for one third of the human lifespan? So when you're 75, you have spent 25 years sleeping. That's cray cray. Sleep is incredibly important and affects every part of our bodies. While it seems like a very straightforward idea, Sleep is actually incredibly complicated. There are four stages of sleep and they are divided into two categories, non-REM or rapid eye movement and REM. The first stages are part of non-REM. The first stage is when we get super sleepy and doze off. From there, we fall into stage two where you become more relaxed. This allows the activity in your brain and body to slow down. It's much easier to be woken up during these stages, which is why the thunder was able to startle me awake. The third stage is the last and deepest part of the non-REM category. During this stage, your brain shows very slow activity, which means you are incredibly relaxed, like when you're laying under the sun. The third stage helps with your thinking and memory. We then go to stage four, REM sleep. During stage four, there is significant activity in the brain and every part of the body experiences temporary paralysis besides the eyes and breathing muscles. Wow, that's almost like a mummy. Most sleep time is spent in the REM sleep stage. It's an incredibly important stage for your memory and learning because this is when your brain processes and commits things to your memory. Wow, no wonder I always did well in school when I got a good night's sleep. Without all these stages, we would be tossing and turning all night long. Man, so how exactly do we know when we need to fall asleep? Our brain actually has a biological clock called the circadian rhythms. It uses the amount of light around us to sense when we should be awake and when we should be asleep. That's why it's so important to turn off all those devices so your circadian rhythms can help you fall asleep. Recently, scientists have found a gene that is involved in the circadian regulation. It's called the wide awake gene, and you won't believe how they figured this out. They tested it on fruit flies. Scientists removed the gene from the fruit flies and noticed a significant drop in the amount of sleep they were getting. Scientists are hoping to find more information on how our cells and their processes affect sleep. Another process your body uses to know when to sleep is called your sleep drive. It craves sleep, just like your stomach craves food. Your body can actually force you to go to sleep if you're not getting enough. Doesn't matter if you're behind the wheel in a car or in the middle of a math test. As the day progresses, your desire for sleep increases until you need it. Your circadian rhythms and your sleep drive sense how much sleep you need and determine when you go to sleep, whether you want to or not. Say what? If you want to study sleep and all the ways it affects our lives, then you should look at exploring neuroscience, like Matthew Walker. Neuroscience handles the functions and structure of the nervous system and brain. Mr. Walker has dedicated his career to understanding sleep and how important it is for us. Because sleep is essential for our mental and physical development, we can develop different problems and diseases if we don't get enough, such as anxiety and a weakened immune system. Without sleep, we wouldn't be able to function. Man. Oh, I think it's just about time to go back to bed. But before I go, remember family, if you are ever having trouble falling asleep, here are some tips to help you. Create a room that's meant for sleep. This means avoiding bright light, no loud sounds, and not letting a screen distract your brain from that oh so tempting peaceful sleep. If you can't get to sleep, don't stay in bed. Get up and do something else until you feel tired. Exercise 30 minutes a day, but not too late, or just like caffeine, you'll be up all night. Having a sleep schedule. Going to bed and waking up at the same time helps your body to know when you go to sleep. 
And finally, relax before you nap. Take a warm bath, read a book, or have a nighttime routine that signals bedtime. Oh, well, I think it's time to go back to bed myself. That's going to have to be all for now, kids. See you soon. Peace.